Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you five things you can copy from the John Isner forehand to help improve your forehand. And make sure you stick around till the end when I go in front of the camera and I show you some common mistakes that I see amateur players making all the time so you know what to avoid. Now, first I want to say a big thank you to Jorge Capistani Tennis for allowing me to use this video. Make sure that you subscribe to his channel. I put his link in the description below. So, the first tip. You want to split step and be in the air as your opponent hits the ball. Let me scroll back here. Let's look at the opponent. This is actually Sam Query, I believe. I believe it's Sam Query. But check this out. Yeah, it is. Now watch. He's making contact right now. Now look. Isner's in the air and then doesn't land the split step until now. So you want to do that little hop, that little split step as the opponent hits. But specifically is you want to be in the air as they hit. So take off after they hit. Be in the air as they hit and then land the split step after. That's the proper timing because it synchronizes your head and your feet, meaning your brain recognizing where the ball is going with when your feet hit the ground. So don't land as your opponent hits. Be in the air as they hit. Land just after. Tip number two. As soon as you see that the ball comes to your forehand, get your shoulder sideways. This is such a great view. Here we're looking square at his shoulders, you know, square at his back. Now watch. He instantly turns and gets his shoulders sideways to Sam Query. Now, he's going to turn even farther than that, as we can see now. But it's so important that you get your shoulders sideways. You've got a coil. When you coil, you can then uncoil into the shot. Now, you don't just want to think of your shoulders, but you've got to think of both hands. Notice he's taking the racket back with both hands. So if we just zoom in here. Look at his hands. Left hand's on the racket, left hand's on the racket. So as he's turning his shoulders, he's also bringing that left hand with him. Again, this is so that the upper body is turned more than the lower body. Let's look at his shoulders versus his hips. Here are his hips. So that's the way his hips are angled right now. And his shoulders. So his shoulders are turned much farther than his hips. Again, we're talking about coiling. When you turn away from the court, it allows you to turn toward the court and get the racket speed. And when you have racket speed, you can hit both fast and with spin. Now, the third tip. When he takes the racket down, his strings are closed. Now, when he, meaning his strings are tilted down toward the ground. So as the racket's dropping, his strings are down toward the ground. Now, he was actually doing this when he took the racket back in tip two. You know, he's taking the racket back with both hands. Notice his forearm is level and his racket is closed. I did a video a few weeks ago on Diego Schwartzman, and it was the same idea how the strings were tilted down during the take back. You see so many players do this past and present. You know, think about Agassi, think about Andy Murray, uh, Grigor Dimitrov. They take the racket back and the strings are tilted down. Now he still has the tip of the racket around head level with the strings down, but you want the strings down and then as the racket drops, they need to stay pointing down. This is vital to your consistency. Go film yourself. Film yourself from the back. Have somebody feed you balls. Rally. Hit on a ball machine. Get the strings tilted down. At this point, this is that classic point the butt of the racket at the ball idea. Sorry, I didn't have a tool here. Here we go. You need the butt cap pointing at the ball with the strings pointing down. This is what's going to allow your strings to then face forward when you strike the ball. The strings will face forward over the net it without, you know, with ease, you know, without having to do much if the strings are tilted down prior to contact. The more, you know, semi-western your grip, then the more the strings will face down. The more eastern your grip, then maybe your racket won't face down as much as this, but your racket might be like this with an eastern. That's fine. As long as they're tilted somewhat down, it's going to help you get your strings to face forward at contact. Now, speaking of the contact, notice his strings are facing forward, but look where his left hand is. You see Azarenka do this. You see Tommy Haas do this. Where from the back view, their non-hitting hand is visible. Dominic Team does this. You want that non-hitting hand visible over your that same shoulder. So if it's your left hand, it's going to be visible over your left shoulder. Here's the reason why. It's vital that when you uncoil, remember that racket was dropping, as the racket drops, watch his left hand move out of the way, right? So his left hand is going to move out of the way, but it's not going to move down. That's typically what you see amateur players doing, especially those who struggle turning their hips. 
what should happen is the, the non-hitting hand should rise as it's moving out of the way. This helps hip turn. If the non-hitting hand drops and this arm goes down, it can often become a counterweight. If you've ever seen someone hug themselves <laughs> when they're hitting a forehand, it's because their non-hitting hand dropped, which is not what you want. You want that non-hitting hand to go up as it moves out of the way, and you can see that brilliantly with John Isner's forehand here. And then last is an upward swing where the hand finishes around head level. I love when players swing up this much. I'm not a fan of when players, you know, contact here and then immediately go over here with their racket. I like when the racket goes up higher. When the racket goes up higher, there's more of a lift. You'll hit the net less. You'll get more depth. So I want you swinging up. And I'm a big fan of when players catch. Now, he's not catching the racket, but I'm a big fan of when Serena, Venus, Dominic Team, when he's practicing his forehand, when he catches the racket with the left hand. Players will argue, well, catching the racket doesn't matter. And you're like, you're right. But having the left hand up matters or your non-hitting hand. Having your non-hitting hand up matters. So why not just catch to ensure that your hand was up? It's kind of a, a mechanism to make sure that that hand is up. All right, let me go in the front of the camera right now and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, both what you should do and the, the uh, techniques that you should avoid. Hey, your video is about to start in just a moment, but be sure to check out our upcoming Double Strategy Live Zoom class. You can check out more information down below at 2minutetennis.net. So the first idea is the split step. I'm gonna hit on the Topspin Pro. You gotta get one of these. My affiliate link's in the description below. I'll show you from the back view at first so that you can see this the way you just saw Isner, and then I'll show you from the front. So you want to split step as your opponent hits the ball, but specifically you actually wanna be in the air at the exact moment that the opponent is hitting. So it's very simple. Go out and film yourself. Film yourself from the back so that you can see the opponent hitting and that way you can see if you're in the air as they're hitting. I like to say, to think of it as when your opponent strikes the ball that an electric shock like bzz, quick zaps the court and you wanna be off the ground as they're hitting so that you're not getting zapped, right? You're like bzz, <laughs> bzz. You wanna be in the air as they're hitting for a split moment there's a little electric shock and you don't want to get zapped by the electri electricity. That's kind of the way I explain it to my students. So when you're hitting on the Topspin Pro, you'll do that. You'll split step with every single shot. The second idea is turn your shoulders right away. I don't care if it's an, an open stance, if you're going to get sideways, but you've got to get sideways with your shoulders and even more than sideways slightly to get that initial coil. When you do that, use both hands. You'll see this all the time. Players let their left hand drop or they'll just let it be down or they'll even do this or even reach toward the net. Again, I'm gonna show you this from the front as well. Don't just reach toward the net. Don't do that. Turn with both hands. Reaching toward the net often just results in someone hugging themselves as they strike the ball. Turn with both hands. When you do this, get your racket tip high but slightly closed. I don't want you turning open with your racket, even if it's with both hands. If you turn open, it can be tough to close the racket at the bottom. It can also make for a very large swing and very fast, deep balls can often rush you. So I'm split stepping and then I'm gonna turn with both hands. Split stepping, turn with both hands. Now, Isner had his left hand on the grip. I like doing it on the throat. I feel like it gives me more racket head control with my non-hitting hand. The next idea, third idea, was when the racket drops, you want your strings tilted down. One of the biggest causes of not being able to hit topspin on forehands and backhands for recreational players is the racket being on edge during the drop or at the very bottom. When the racket is on edge, it will tend to be open when you get to the ball. Now players, I'll show you this from the side, players will often try to rectify that, right? The racket's on edge, so their racket naturally will be open but they don't actually hit with their racket open because as they get to the ball, they start to turn their racket to try to get the racket to be square. If they turn perfectly on time, wow, they hit the best shot they ever have. If they're a little late with the turn, ball goes out, and if they're a little early with the turn, the ball goes in the net. This is typically when players say, I, I feel like, why can't I hit that shot every time? I'm just so erratic. It's because the racket's on edge. So it's important that you film yourself and that your racket, as it's dropping, is tilted close. If I'm more Eastern, the racket might be closed less. If I'm more semi-Western, the racket will be closed more. 
but the amount it closes doesn't change the fact that it should be closed. Just don't have your racket on its edge. And one thing, you might use an Eastern and close your racket face a ton if you really lay your wrist back. And that's what you see Roger Federer do. His racket face is closed a lot, as much as a lot of players do on their set with their semi-western grip and he rips the ball with topspin easily with that eastern grip so dropping the racket now as it's dropping you're going to be unwinding with your body you don't want to drop and your body has not moved as you're dropping your body should be unwinding but as it's unwinding and you're getting closer and closer to contact swinging low to high from below contact butt cap pointing at the ball What's important is as you get to the ball that your non-hitting hand is up. This is typically what I tell people to wave to their opponent. So when you're striking the ball, have your non-hitting hand here just waving to the opponent. If this hand drops, it can become a counterweight, the hips can't turn, and then the, your ability to be accurate, be able to hit the ball on the move, your ability to hit the ball down the line with topspin goes kind of out the window. And all of a sudden those players are always hitting the ball cross court and they're hitting the ball um, you know, short and low over the net rather than being able to lift. So you want the left hand, if you're right-handed, you want your non-hitting hand visible over this shoulder at contact when viewing from the back. And then last is I want you to finish high. Now a lot of pros don't catch the racket, but some do. I want you to catch the racket. The reason is be not because catching has some magical benefit, but in order to catch the racket, you had to make sure that your non-hitting hand was rising. That's the key. That's really the key. So I want your non-hitting hand up and I want you swinging up. I don't want you doing this. I want you swinging up and having your left hand or non-hitting hand catch the racket. Now I'll show you this from the front. So feet moving. Let me see if this is in the right spot. Yeah, this is pretty good. All right, feet moving, split step. I see my opponent's about to hit the ball, so I take off so that I'm in the air as they hit and then I land after they hit. That's the fastest way to then move. It's a braking mechanism if you're moving, but it also allows you when you land to kind of stretch everything and explode with a really fast first step exactly in the direction you need to move. So my elbows are out in my ready position, I split step, I see the ball come to my forehand side and I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna turn with both hands. You'll see that my chin has not moved and my shoulder is now under my chin. So you don't wanna be turning like this, you wanna turn your upper body so much that the shoulder comes underneath your chin. You then move around as the racket drops, you can see my racket's closed, as my racket drops, my non-hitting hand moves out of the way my racket drops below contact so I can put topspin on the ball, right? Low to high is how I'm gonna to put topspin. But my racket is closed at this point. When my racket is closed, that's what produces a racket that's square against the back of the ball and I don't have to do anything. I don't wanna have my racket on edge because then it's open or I gotta roll and then my consistency goes out the window. So my racket is closed. My non-hitting hand at contact is now higher than contact. It's rising. One drill I'll give people is to put one hand on either end of the racket and just do this because the racket moves the non-hitting hand out of the way and it just gives the feeling of rotating the body. You want that non-hitting hand rising. That's what's gonna produce the low to high spin and then you've got the finish super high. So let me just hit some balls on the Top Spin Pro over and over again and it should look like this. You gotta go right now and click the link in the description. I'll also put it in the, um, the first comment. The uh, link for the Top Spin Pro. So you can be doing this at home and learning how to improve your forehand. I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for your support. Watching my videos, it means the world to me. Um, I love making these videos. I love helping you play your best tennis. Go out and film yourself. Film yourself hitting balls. Film yourself hitting on the Topspin Pro. 
Are you gonna look exactly like me or Dominic Team or Serena or Roger Federer? No, and that's okay. Our handwriting doesn't look like theirs either. But we wanna have certain places in our swing that we hit, that we split step, that we turn with both hands, that we drop and close the racket face, that our non-hitting hand is higher than contact, that we're swinging up and catching the racket like Dominic Team when he's practicing his forehand. Go out and film yourself. Make sure that you've got these five ideas. And if you do, there's no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.